Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update for everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. So, um, it's Sunday, it's September 25th. Um, let's see what happened yesterday. So, MakerDAO had a risk evaluation um, report that came out. Um, hopefully, we'll get access in um, RE to become a collateral type in October. Um, we had the biggest ever week of deposits into the deposit pool, which was really wonderful to see. Um, the ETH merge <laughs> saves a whole lot of money, like many Michael Saylor's worth of money. Um, the Rocket Pool intern was doing a wonderful job on Twitter yesterday. And there was a whale who was limit selling that I shared some details about. So let's get to today's stuff. So today we hit this really amazing landmark of 250,000 staked ETH. So it's 125,000 RETH, 125,000 ETH from the um, stakers, the node operators. So um, it's really great that we've hit this milestone. And it's just right here. So we hit 250,000 ETH staked that Maverick shared. So it's really great to see that um, the protocol's growing so fast recently. I think this is our, let me have a look. This is actually our, one of our fastest periods of growth. So if you have a look over here in April, sorry, in March, when the Tetra Nodes incentive started, the gradient of the slope here was like really steep, which was the fastest period of growth we'd had before that. And now we're like reaching a period of growth that's just as fast pretty much. So it's really, really great to see that, you know, we've grown so much in the last few weeks since the incentives went live about here. We've gone from 108,000 RE ETH to now 125,000 RE ETH. So we've had a really nice bump in the last couple of weeks. The last week, actually just last week in a bit. So it's been really, 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 really great to see. And um, I'm really happy that we're growing so fast. The thing is that, um, you know, the first million is always the hardest. Hopefully we'll be at, once... Atlas goes through and once we get LEBs and we get SAS and we get solo streak and mig migration, all that stuff together will just really propel us, I think, to the next level. And I'm really excited about that. So let's look at the next thing today is the smoothing pool now has 100 nodes in the smoothing pool. So let's have a look what that looks like over here. Sorry, 1,000 nodes in the smoothing pool, which is... Um, sorry, I'm just waiting for the page to load. I think it works out to be around 66% of the, yeah, 66, 1,004 nodes, 66.45% of all uh, rocket pool nodes are now in the smoothing pool, and we're approaching 50% of all mini pools in the smoothing pool. Um, we've already actually got 75 ETH as well, which is, I think, beyond some people's expectations of how much the smoothing pool will be able to gather. So I'm really happy that we're like, exceeding expectations and all these metrics um, in the first week and a half of operation. It's really amazing to see. So um, I think that's something that's going to be really attractive for solo staker migration is like if you've got one or two uh, validators on your node, um, you might go a month, two months, maybe even six months without seeing a proposal. Whereas with this smoothing pool, you're getting MEV and tips coming through every month, every four weeks. And the ticket to that, um, to get that entry is staking with Rocket Pool, right? Like you buy our, you buy your uh, RPL, you get your node set up, you get your mini pools, and you get a lot of benefits in return for that. You get access to RPL inflation, you get access to 15% extra commission on ETH, and you get access to the smoothing pool, which will make things smoother for you, like much more regular, much more predictable, which is truly wonderful. Um, next, we had this tease from Nangas, where he messaged Solar Curve. Solar Curve, I think, is the person who works for Balancer. They were helping us get up, get us set up the RPL RETH pool. Um, Solar Curve, hey Solar Curve, Nangas says this, hey Solar Curve, we are discussing a feed and arbitrum with Chainlink. What is the what is best for the rate provider pure RETH exchange rate or one that also includes market data? So um, we kind of 
had some hints of chain link stuff going on over the last few weeks. It seems like there's active discussions taking place now. It seems like the team's actually involved with this. And I'm really excited about that. It's really, really great to see um, that it's working out this way. And I really hope that this happens soon and like everything goes official soon because we've got so many different uh, platforms and systems waiting for um, that chain link integration. So today someone was talking in trading and they were saying like, oh, you know, with the with the liquidity incentives, we just, uh, because someone uh, minted 1000 RETH and then put it into the RETH uh, RPL pool on uh, Balancer. And someone was saying, oh, these might just be mercenaries. Once the rewards go down, they might, um, you know, liquidate their RETH on the secondary market and, you know, we'll lose our premium and then it will kind of like throw all our minting efforts off. So the response that I think it was Valdorf who gave was to say that liquidity incentives beget um, integrations and the main one that we want right now is Chainlink and then Chainlink begets like a whole bunch of different protocol integrations which is what we desperately need and then that means that the people who are minting Aretha are much less likely to be mercenaries they'll be the people who actually want to use um, Aretha in different DeFi apps and different DeFi um, systems and that is what we're using so there might be some mercenaries along the way but in the long term the goal is that we have um, a whole ecosystem that's dependent on like fully integrated with our ETH and that'll be on mainnet that'll be on optimism that'll be on chain link and eventually that'll be on places like the zk sync and other layer twos as well so um we really need this like i'm so happy that it's happening because i think really good things are going to happen after we get this done and um it's really exciting Okay, next we have this um, kind of sad post that I saw today. Uh, it was by Dres.eth saying, wish me luck bros, gonna try to escape from Russia tomorrow. So, um, I don't try to get into politics on this channel, uh, understandably so, but you know, Russia's quite a big country and we know that there's Lido devs who, who live in Russia, are from Russia. There are a whole bunch of like devs in the Ethereum ecosystem who are in um, Russia and here we have a node operator in Rocket Pool is from Russia too. So, um, Drez, I wish you all the luck tomorrow if you're trying to cross the border. Um, and they had a few questions about like how, you know, they can manage their node while they're away. Um, and Valdorf was giving them some tips about, you know, destroying the hard drive or um, trying to stop it from getting uh, slashed if you have it running in two places. And... Um, and Dresd went on to explain that, you know, they're going to try to leave from Russia and go to Kazakhstan and then from there try to get to Israel. So um, with zero knowledge, which was really nice of them, I said, um, I was going to offer you help if you're coming to or going through Turkey. I hope you make it through such shit situation at the moment. So it is a really horrible situation in Ukraine. It's a really horrible situation for Russians now who, you know, want nothing to do with um, the war that's happening with the everything that's going on and especially don't want anything to do with the draft and um they're finding themselves in this really horrible situation so i really hope that um things get resolved soon um i don't know how naive i am in making that statement but i really hope it does and i really hope people like dres.eth who want to try to get out of there are able to very soon um yeah so dres obviously like had some issues with their um, node and making sure that everything was okay while they were gone and trying to figure that stuff out and people were kind of like helping giving advice and um trying to trying to figure things out so they were saying like um the dress was saying that the border is still open but not for long i guess for males from 18 to 60 so i guess dress is in that age group so he thinks it's best to leave and um yeah it's really um it's really tough so good luck Drez, good luck to everyone else in our community who's in Russia or in Ukraine and or in any kind of difficulty, in any kind of difficult situation. I don't know if we have any Iranian um, node operators or people in the community from Iran, but if we do, then there's stuff going on out there and in lots of other places too. So um, my, my best wishes go out to all of you and um, I hope you all stay safe. And on that kind of 
side note, I'm going to end it today. I hope you all have a lovely end of your weekend. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.